All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. It looks like you're the only person here right now, but that's totally fine with me. We got someone. <laughs> all right. So do you have you used Photoshop before? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and go about this like you haven't used Photoshop before, just in case. So when you open up Photoshop, you're going to get this window here. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to click New File. And then with this, it's going to determine whatever size your canvas is. So for example, if you want to print something out on a normal piece of paper that's an 8.5 by 11 piece, this is where you would change that size. Um, we're not really making something to be printed out like on a piece of paper. So for example, if you're doing this and you want to print it out to put in a photo frame, you would measure the size of the photo frame. Um, so I'm just going to do 9 inches by 9 inches. And you always want your resolution to be at least 300 pixels per inch because um, that's the quality of your photo. You don't want it to be pixely or grainy. So we're going to go ahead and start off with that. And then once everything's done, we're going to hit Create. And it's going to open up a new thing here. And it's going to be brand new canvas with a locked background layer. What we're going to do is we're not going to mess with the background layer. It's always going to stay there as the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. And then I have a folder over here with some pictures in it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click a picture. I'm going to click it and drag it into Photoshop and just drop it right on top. It'll take a second to load and then it'll drop the picture in for me. Um, all these pictures we just downloaded from a free to use website called Pixabay. And all the stuff on there is free for commercial and personal use. So that's just what we're using here today. And then once that's in, all I have to do is I could use these corners to resize it. But I don't really need to resize it right now, so I'm just going to hit Enter. And that'll clear those grid lines off of there. Um, so that's how we would drag something in. Yeah, what's up? Oh, you're good, you're good. You're good. <laughs> no, I just started, just started. Um, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take a face and we're going to take a face and we're going to put it on a snowman. So if you wanted to make like a holiday card or a fun picture of your kids or anything like that, you can go ahead and do it like this. Um, but I was just showing the basics of dragging a photo into here. So I'll do it again with the snowman. I just have a folder open up, opened up on uh, my other screen. So I just grab the picture of the snowman, click and drag it over to Photoshop. And when I let it go, it'll load it on in. It'll just take a second. And then the snowman will pop up. And then when it's got these blue lines on it, it means I could change the size. So I can grab the corners and I can click and drag to change how big I want it. So let's say I want the snowman to fill the screen. So we'll go like that big. That's a good size for me, maybe a little bit bigger. I'll just drag him right into the middle. And then once I'm done, I just hit the enter key on my keyboard and then he'll be right there. And then to get back to the picture of the boy that I had, I can just drag this layer to the top. Uh, the layers are very similar to like if you were to use tracing paper to draw how you can see one over the other. So whichever one's on top is going to be the one that you see. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this face and we're going to put it on the snowman. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to take the kid's face. So we'll use this tool called the selection tool. This is the lasso selection tool. So if I click on it and I hold, you can see there's other selection tools here as well, but we're just going to use the lasso tool. And then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to trace around his face, giving a little bit of extra space around it. So we got something to work with. And then once we have that selected and you can see that little moving dotted line, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click this button down here, which is the masking button. It's a little rectangle with a circle in it. And when we do that, it'll remove everything except for what we selected. And it's still there. We can go ahead and bring it back if we need to. So we can remove the mask. We can put it back on. Um, or if I need to tweak it at all, I can just use a paintbrush, click on the mask, which is this black and white little square over here. 
And then if I use black, it'll erase. And if I use the color white, it'll bring stuff back. So it's very handy. It's a lot better than just erasing because if you realize, oh no, I need a little bit more here, you could always bring it back. And then to change your colors over here, you have these squares. If you click on them, you can go ahead and pull up this color picker. You use it by selecting the color you want over here. So let's say I want a dark green. I go to the green and then I can change the hue, saturation, lightness, and darkness here. So if I want a really vibrant green, I can go here. If I want like a, a dark green, I can go here. A very pastel green, I can go over here. Same thing for all the colors. So like if I wanted a blue, dark blue, light blue, pastel. Um, and then when you're in the mask, you can only use black and white, which are over here. But that's how I'm changing colors. So then the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to change my brush from hard, which means it'll give me this hard edge. So you can see it's a nice hard edge. If I change it to soft, it'll give me a nice soft edge. So let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see. But you can see it like fades it a lot more, which is what we're going to want for this. So I'm going to want to fade all around all the edges of his face. That way you can't see any hair in his face. The edges of his face aren't so harsh. And then we have a little face here. And then what we will want to do next is we're going to want to move the face so it's over the snowman. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll change the opacity so we can see exactly where the snowman is behind it, which means we're going to make it a little see-through. So we're going to go up here to the opacity bar and we're going to turn it down just a little bit, maybe about 50%. So that way I can see behind it. And then in order to move it and change the size, we're going to need to transform it. So we're going to hold control and the letter T on our keyboard and it's going to bring up this blue box again, which allow us to change the size to rotate it and to move it around. So what I want to do is I want to make this a little bit smaller so it fits. That way his eyebrows and his mouth can both be seen. And then I want to put it in the center of the snowman's face. Once I have it where I want it, I hit enter so it will stay in place. Take the opacity, turn it all the way back up. And then the next thing I'll have to do is I'll have to take the snowman's face away. So uh, in order to color on a layer or to edit a layer, you have to rasterize it. To do so, you hover over what layer it's on. You right click with your mouse and you click rasterize. And all that's going to do is it's going to turn it into uh, a pixel image instead of a photograph that you placed in. And so once I have that, I'm going to go back over here to our selection lasso tool. I'm going to click that to turn it on. And I'm going to draw around the snowman's face. And then once I have that selected, it's got the dotted line moving. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go edit content aware fill. Oh, I just saw, noticed that you can't see the drop down menu. So I clicked on edit up here and it gives me this white drop down menu. And about this far down, It'll say fill, stroke, and content aware fill. So where it says content aware fill, that's where we're going to click. And then I'll bring up this screen. And you can see Photoshop does all the work on taking that face away and replacing it with more snow. And it does a pretty good job. So since it does a pretty good job, we don't really have to do anything else. We could just hit OK. And then you can see it'll replace his face. So it took the snowman's face off. Then when we turn this layer back on, you can see we're a lot closer to getting that face on there. So then we're going to go back into this mask. We're going to click here. We're going to grab our paintbrush again, which is right here. Make sure it's set to zero hardness so it's soft. And then we're just going to remove more bits and pieces of him until his face blends in a little bit better with all that snow. 
Now we also want to make sure we can see this top of the hat here. You can see the scarf. Get rid of any harsh lines there might be, any shadows or anything like that. All right, and we got his face on there. So then the next thing we're going to want to do is make a new layer. So you come down here where it's a little square with a plus in it, and you hit that to make a new layer. Once you have a new layer, you're going to go ahead and right click on it and hit create clipping mask. It's going to bring up another white box with options in it. Um, and one of the options is going to be create clipping mask. And then once we have this box made, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the color mixer. And when we open the color mixer, it also gives us an option to choose a color from anywhere on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the color of the snow and you can see it automatically picked. Oh, it's not showing the color picker either. Um, but with the color picker, um, when you click on here, it'll automatically change the color. And then once I hit OK, you can see it change to the color of the snow right here, which is a nice grayish blue color. And once you have that, you're going to use your paintbrush and you're just going to paint that color over. And it'll kind of look like the face disappears, but it's still there. And then we'll go over here to our drop down menu where it says normal. Those are our layer modes. And we'll select the one that is color. So once we hit color, you can see the face matches up with the snowman. And so just to finish touching everything up, we'll go back into our mask, make sure we have a soft brush and we have black selected. And we'll just go and get rid of any little lines that there might be. So I noticed there was a harsh line right here over by his eyebrow and there's another one up here by his eyebrow as well. And I'll just paint to get rid of those. Make sure we can see his hat nice and clear and his scarf very well. And then we got a face on a snowman. So I'll go ahead and I'll run through this one more time. But if you have any questions first, please let me know. Yes, they're very small, unfortunately. Yeah. And then we, I work at the DMS, which is part of the Joliet Library. We're in the basement of the Ottawa, Ottawa Street location. We actually have Photoshop free and available for you to learn. And we could also teach you one-on-one -on -one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, we like to help people as much as we can. <laughs> so then since this is all done, I'll go ahead and I'll save it. So in order to save it, we go up here to file and then it drops down another white menu, which it doesn't show on here, but I can see it on my computer. And then you just click Save As, and then it'll bring up a, a window, like how you normally save files. You'll find a place to save it, and then you'll just title it and save it whatever you need to save it. So I'll save this as Kids Snowman, and it'll save it as a Photoshop file. So what that means is it'll save it with all these different layers. So if I ever need to come back in and change anything or edit anything, I can. And then in order to save a picture like one that you would give to a photo company or that you would print out, you want to export it as a PNG or a JPEG file. So we would go to File, Export, Export as PNG, and then name it again, save it, and then you'll have that file on your computer. Um, and if you do this here at the DMS, we would put it on a flash drive for you. And then you could take that flash drive um, upstairs and print it out. Uh, you could print it on our poster printer here. You could take it to like CVS or Walgreens and have them print it out for you. So it just gives you a file that you're able to do just about anything with. All right, so since that's done, we're going to go ahead and go through this again. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn those layers off and we're going to bring in a new picture of a new person and do this one more time. So I'm just going to click and drag my photo into Photoshop. It'll load. Perfect. I'll hit enter. And then I'll go ahead and set the transparency down to about 50 so I can get the face at the right size. And then I'll hold control and T on my keyboard. 
And then I'll go ahead and make her face fit right in there. A little bit bigger. There we go, that's good. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this back up all the way to 100%. And then I'll use my lasso selection tool again. I'll select around her face. Getting a little bit of extra room there. And then I'll go ahead and hit this mask button again, which is at the bottom corner. It's a rectangle with a little circle in it. And then I'll go ahead and make that mask for us. So I'll click inside that mask layer again, go to my brush, make sure it's set to soft, make sure I have black selected down here, and I'll just go ahead and start painting away at those edges. Making everything nice and soft, blend it out as much as I can, make sure we can see the hat and the scarf. All right, and then once I got that done, I make a new layer. I go ahead and I right click. I set it as create clipping mask. And then I pick the color of the snow. So we click on this little square. It'll bring up another window. You can't see it, but it's right here. And then we can just click the snow. It'll give us the color of the snow. And then we click OK. And then I'll just paint over this and then go to the drop down bar right here for the color modes and set it to color. We can see that's a little dark because your skin complexion is a little darker. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another layer. We're going to set this one to clipping mode by right clicking and hitting create clipping mask. We're going to drag it underneath that color layer that we did before right there. And then we're going to go up here where it says adjustments. We're going to click on that. It's going to open this new tab here. And we're going to go ahead and click on curves right here. And with the curves, what it's going to do is this top corner is going to be our lights and this bottom corner is going to be our darks. So if it's dark, we're going to grab the bottom corner and bring it up a little bit. And for the lights, we're going to bring it up just a little. And then we just want to bring it up a little bit so it matches the snowman. That's pretty close. And then we'll just go back into this face mask layer again right here and just continue painting away those edges until they're nice and soft and blended out. And once we get that nice and blended out, we have another face on a snowman. And then do you have any questions about any of the tools that I'm using or how any of these work? Yeah, being able to play with it definitely helps because that'll bring up a lot more questions. Because seeing someone do it is one thing, but then when you have to do it yourself, it's completely different. They are... Yes. No problem, no problem. <laughs> you could do a lot, a lot, a lot with Photoshop. You can draw, you can color things, you can take photos like uh, old photos that might have been damaged. You can scan them, bring them into Photoshop and get rid of all the wrinkles and creases in them. You, you could do a lot, a lot with Photoshop. Yeah, no, you, yeah, we can definitely help restore old photographs. That is one of the main things that we do here. We have scanners and everything available here for you to be able to do that. No problem. I hope you have a great day. You too. It is very cold outside. Don't want to turn into a snowman ourselves. No problem. You have a great day. All right, goodbye. Digital media. 
Studio.